Greetings, Internet! I'm Ken from the Computer Clan, here today to demo a new update to the Windows 10 Technical Preview. This is the January Technical Preview, build 9926. So, this will be a lot of fun, and at the end of the video, we will also have an exclusive preview for our upcoming show, Ken Cinema of Shenanigans, so stay tuned for that. Alright, let's jump right in. As you can see, a little bit of the interface is different. The taskbar looks a little bit different, there's some new icons down here, and, yes! The new start menu. Hey, that looks great. The main philosophy for Windows 10 is to have one Windows. It'll run on tablets, phones, PCs, and even the Xbox. And it will work with universal apps so developers can make one piece of software and have that software tailored to different device screen sizes. You can have your live tiles over here on this side of the interface, but have a traditional list right here on this side. And you can even hit the all apps view and just get a scrolling list of your apps. And you can go back. You have your account right here. You can click it, change settings, lock the screen, or sign out. Over here, you have your power button to sleep, shut down, or restart the computer. And if you want the start screen still, you can just click the expand button and it goes into full screen mode. So anytime I open up the menu using the Windows key or clicking the start button, it just opens up full screen. If you want to put it back to the menu, just click the arrows and it goes right back. Also, Another thing that you saw pop up when we open up the menu is this Ask Me Anything box. That's actually integrated with Cortana. Cortana is the digital assistant. It can talk to you, you can talk to it, and it can help you find information. You can access that from the start menu or you can just click the search button. An additional setting is if you right click on the taskbar, your search options can be changed here. You can turn off the search icon or have the search box visible all the time. Personally, I like to have it just as an icon. So if I open up the start screen or start menu, I can type something, for example, sound, and I can get the sound recorder app, sound settings, I can search the web for sound, I can open up an app right here, this is the default highlighted option, it's an application. So if I want to access the Cortana interface, I can just click this button. I can type in a question or some other search query, or I can click the microphone and talk to her. But also, as you can see, I have some information being displayed at a glance, so when I open up Cortana, I get my web history and my stock tracking. This little button up here with the lines, this menu will let you change settings and what you want visible and invisible. So for example, under the settings, I can turn on a hands-free command. There's a lot of other options in here, but I can turn on a hands-free command that lets me control Cortana just by talking to the computer. I don't need to click a button. So I'm going to turn that on, and let's say I'm just using my computer, doing my thing, and then I could just be like, hmm, I need some stock information. Hey, Cortana, what's Microsoft stock at? Microsoft closed up 0.11% today at 47.18. So there you go. Again, you can click the mic to talk to her. You can type in a command or just say, hey, Cortana, tell me a joke. Why do sharks live in salt water? Because pepper water makes them sneeze. <laughs> so the voice sounds pretty good. It uses some nice inflections and everything, so it's really great. What do you think about Siri? I think it's cool that she's out there trying to make people's lives a little easier. See, there's no hard feelings here. That's just great. Okay, now I would like to demo Continuum. It's a feature that helps keep the system seamlessly operating between different types of input and screen sizes. So, let's open up a few apps here. So I'm working with the Explorer. Maybe I'm changing some settings in the new Settings app. And as you can see, all these apps will run in a window. These windows are responsive. If the window is small, there's a list generated. If the window is bigger, there's icons that are generated. So as you can see, all of these apps run in Windows and I can drag them around and do what I want. And I can also use that new task view button so I can just get an easy glance at all of the open windows and I can even add a desktop if I want to, to switch between desktops. And this works great for multitasking on a typical PC setup. But if you're on a tablet and you want to use touch, this interface isn't always optimal. So when you detach your mouse and keyboard, the system will ask you if you want to enter tablet mode. But there's also a manual switch for it. Since I'm not using a tablet, I will use that. This little button here opens up the Action Center, which also displays notifications, which is really handy. But on the bottom here, there's actually another new feature that lets you easily turn on and off settings and change settings. And one of these settings is tablet mode 
Once I enter tablet mode, everything is entered into full screen and it's more optimal for touch. Even when I open up the start menu, it now opens it up in full screen mode. So if I'm using this on a surface, for example, it's much easier to touch with the interface because I don't have a keyboard and mouse detected. And let's say I'm done with that now, I can now turn off the tablet mode and everything is restored to a window. Before I get into some other apps, I'm sure people are going to ask about Project Spartan, which is Microsoft's new web browser. That software is currently not in this build. It will have a new interface compared to Internet Explorer. It will have a new rendering engine. It'll have a reader mode, a note-taking mode, built-in PDF support, integration with Cortana, and more. As of right now, I can't demo that, but that is to come in the future. All right, so let's take a look at that settings app now, because one of the more confusing things about Windows 8 was the difference between the control panel and the settings app. Well, Microsoft is going to be moving to just using the settings app. Now, currently I have noticed there still is a control panel hidden in the system. For example, if I go to personalize here, I still get the classic control panel. I'm not sure if that will be in the final build though. However, the settings app works great because it kind of combines the traditional Windows 7 layout with the Windows 8 style. For example, I can just click personalization and get my lock screen settings. I could choose this photo that I shot or this image that I generated. I like art, <laughs> I like making things. So maybe I wanna personalize my interface and use something that I made, or I can use one of the built-in images. That one's pretty neat too. So let's say I use this one. Now when I lock the system, I have that new image. It's really simple. Windows 10 is going to be a pretty big update for gamers. The Xbox app has some great new features, including the ability to have a game DVR mode. So while you're playing a game, the system can let you actually record your last 30 seconds of gameplay using the DVR feature, and then you can share it with your friends and enemies. And you can even stream Xbox games to your PC or tablet. So if they're console only, you can actually still play those games on your PC with Windows 10. And I want to mention that DVR mode is not Xbox games only. In fact, during the demo that Microsoft gave, they showed a game running from Steam that could be recorded with the DVR mode. So the system is still compatible with other game distribution platforms. In terms of gaming technology, DirectX 12 is going to be a huge update for developers. And overall, it can offer CPU performance that's up to 50% faster on average, and it's really great with power efficiency. DirectX 12 will allow games to run at up to half the power consumption, and that is huge for laptops and specifically tablets. So those are great changes with DirectX 12. Another new app that Microsoft is including is a new Photos application. So let's take a look. Let's dive right in. This is the Photos app. So I have some photos in here. It's a really nice interface just to scroll through. I can have albums and folders. These features aren't available yet, but there's going to be automatic album creation. There's automatic photo enhancing on import. It can even automatically group duplicate photos and bursts. And the auto syncing is all integrated with OneDrive. All these features aren't functional yet, but they will be in here in a future build. I can even change settings right from here. Again, this interface looks pretty consistent with what we've seen earlier. And I can even collapse the sidebar if I want to and just have some simple icons. I can go to a photo if I want. Let's say, where's a good photo that I shot? This milkweed one is pretty awesome. And I can share right from this button. I have edit controls. And I can even use this menu to get some quick shortcuts like set as lock screen, print, or file information. So I can get some metadata about the photograph. So that's a quick look at the new photos application in Windows 10. There's a lot more to come with this. So those are some of the bigger parts of Windows 10. So now let's take a look at some of the smaller details that I know people will care about. As you may have noticed, there are some new animations. For example, when I open a window or close a window, you can see there's a little bit of a scaling and a fade effect going on there. There's also a new animation for minimizing. As you can see, it's a little bit different from the last version. There's even a new animation for maximizing. It kind of just zooms itself. And you can also see the close, maximize, and minimize buttons look a bit bigger. And the window borders are extremely thin now. It looks like it's only like a pixel or two right there, so that's really nice. But it's still easy to grab onto the border 
You also probably notice that there's these new icons here. So for pictures, videos, a lot of the icons have changed. Not all of them are updated. As you can see, the recycle bin hasn't been updated, but they're trying to unify the modern UI with the typical desktop interface to kind of make the color schemes, the design, and aesthetics just look more consistent with each other. Even though there was that Photos app that I showed you, the typical photo viewer is still in this build at least, so I can go to Open With and Open With Photos like I was doing before. There's also Media Players still included with Windows 10, so I can open a video file with the typical Videos app or Windows Media Player. So this videos app works as a video player, but it still has a complete search engine built in for downloading and purchasing content. So if I want to look up a movie, for example, I can just search it and get my results. But if I want to use just a typical media player, I can still go to open with and choose Windows Media Player. Another part of the interface you may have noticed is this full screen button. It is different than the restore and maximize button. If I click the full screen button, it actually takes the application full screen without the taskbar and without the title bar. If I go to the top of the interface, I still can get my little bar up here. I have my menu, so I can get other options right here. But I can still exit full screen mode, minimize or close. So if I click that, it just brings it back into a window. Another thing you will note throughout the system is that the current apps and new apps, of course, kind of adopt a new interface that is still rather dynamic. You'll see this across a lot of the applications, like what we showed in the Photos app. The store also has some UI changes. This is currently a beta piece of software, but pretty much this whole thing is beta right now. So there's a lot to explore with the updated interfaces within the apps that are included with Windows 10. So that's a quick look at Windows 10. There's a lot more to come up with the build conference, I believe is going to be later in 2015, maybe in the middle of the year. So we'll have a lot more to show at that time. And we'll be able to demo Project Spartan once that software is in a new build. Windows 10 will be a free upgrade to Windows 7 and Windows 8.1 users, as long as you upgrade within the first year and as long as your computer is compatible with the system. So that is very nice. Microsoft is really trying to get people to upgrade, and I think this is a good idea. And I hope I covered enough information, but as always, I'm open to questions. If you have any questions about Windows 10, I'd love to help you figure out those answers because I probably couldn't demo everything. <laughs> There's probably a lot more to explore, but if you're curious, just let me know, and I'll try to fix that curiosity. All right, well, thank you for tuning into this demo, and I will see you in the not-too-distant future. Hey, it's an exciting time at the Computer Clan right now because we're gearing up to launch our new comedy series, Ken Cinema of Shenanigans. If you want to have some good fun, good laughs, make fun of movies, or maybe just reminisce of the hit classic Mystery Science Theater 3000, well then this is the show for you, no doubt. It's launching on January 29th on our YouTube channel, and we cannot wait to share it with you and see what you have to say about it. So check it out! What have you got to lose? All right, peace out. La la la, try to keep his sanity with the help of his robot. So for example, under settings, I can have Cortana call me by my own name. Or I can have Cortana respond to me when I say, hey Cortana, so I don't need to click a button. See that? Oh, now it's, oh, when I click a button. Oh, stop. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But hey, it works. I'll, I'll demonstrate that right now.